ಪ್ರಜಾಪತ್ಯಾಶುರಾಶ್ಚಾಸುರಾಶ್ಚಾಸುರಾಶ್ಚಾಸುರಾಶ್ಚಾಸುರಾಶ್ಚಾಸುರ
And because the Asuras are influenced by thoughts and actions directed to visible ends, therefore the gods were fewer and the Asuras more in number. The length and form of the two adjectives due to the addition of a vowel augment makes no change of meaning. The organs, as we know, have a stronger tendency to thoughts and actions that are natural than to those that are recommended by the scriptures, for the former serve visible ends. Hence the gods are fewer, for the tendency that is cultivated by the scriptures is rare. It is attainable with great effort. They, the gods and the asuras living in Prajapati's body, vied with each other for the mastery of these worlds, which are attainable through thoughts and actions prompted by one's natural inclinations as well as those cultivated by the scriptures. The rivalry of the gods and the asuras here means the emergence and subsidence of their respective tendencies. Sometimes the organs manifest the impressions of thoughts and actions cultivated by scriptures. And when this happens, the impressions manifested by those very organs of the thoughts and actions based on perception and inference and producing visible results only, those tendencies characteristic of the asuras subside. That is the victory of the gods and the defeat of the asuras. Sometimes the reverse happens. The characteristic tendencies of the gods are overpowered and those of the asuras emerge. That is the victory of the asuras and the defeat of the gods. Accordingly, when the gods win, there is a predominance of merit and the result is elevation up to the status of prajapati. And when the asuras triumph, demerit prevails and the result is degradation down to the level of stationary objects, while if there be a draw, it leads to human birth. What did the gods do when, being fewer, they were overwhelmed by the asuras who outnumbered them? The gods, being overwhelmed by the asuras, said to one another, Now let us surpass the asuras in this sacrifice, Jyotishtoma, through the Uddhita, that is, through identity with the vital force, the chanter of this accessory of a sacrifice called the Ugita. By overcoming the Asuras, we shall realize our divinity as set forth in the scriptures. This identity with the vital force is attained through meditation and rites. The rites consist of the repetition of mantras that will be presently enjoined. These mantras are to be repeated, etc., Mantra 1.3.28. The meditation is what is being described. Namaste. So here we are back in the place, even in the same room, where the whole Sri Lanka Odyssey started like 12 years ago. Uh, but it's amazing what one cycle of Jupiter can do, because now I'm on a whole different level and really enjoying my existence and uh, well just so much insight that I want to share so even though I don't have a perfect place set up for uh, shooting video uh, I wanted to make one anyway to kick off the third brahmana of the first chapter of Brihadar Nakapanishad which is about the devas and the asuras, the gods and the demons, the angels and the devils. <laughs> and even though it's a story couched in the uh, legends of the gods and so forth, it's actually about the human being and the organs of the body and how they can so easily become overwhelmed by ignorance and evil. So why are the Asuras so much more numerous? Well, go anywhere in the world, even India, and you find so many more evil, nasty, self-indulgent, crazy, stupid, ignorant people than the opposite. The good people, the wise people, 
those who are steeped in the scriptures, those who are performing self-realization, uh, they are rare everywhere. So in this body, the organs, as representatives of the demigods, the different elements and so forth, are also in the same condition. They very easily get caught up in the external perceptions and activities that are based on that which is seen, that which is directly experienced by the senses. And of course, we've been over this a million times. This is Jagrat consciousness. So Jagrat is superficial and it's basically evil because it's based on separation, duality, the difference between this and that. Whereas the devas are worshiping God and ultimately see themselves as one with God. And this is Vashishta Dvaita Vada or Svapna consciousness and the practice of bhakti. So both the devas and the asuras perform sacrifices. But the difference is the asuras perform them for their own selfish ends. Just like there are so many demons who approached Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva for benedictions. And after they got them, they went out and wreaked havoc on everybody and got in a lot of trouble and were ultimately destroyed. So this is a typical activity of the demons. But the devotees want to please the Lord. They want to generate love for the Lord. Because this is what saves you, see? Just performing a sacrifice, even according to the letter of the law in the Vedas, will not give you more than superficial results. That means temporary. So you may acquire some mystic powers or some other opulence, but then just when you come to rely on it most, it will go away. <laughs> so... The only sure path is to develop devotion by which one is rescued from this relative world and attains mukti or moksha. And that is what's described in this chapter. Even though the rites described in the first two brahmanas were perfectly powerful and give results, they can be performed either by the demons or the demigods. And those results can be used either for good or for evil. It's up to the individual. So this Brahmana will show how the identity with death or Hiranyagarbha given by the horse sacrifice can be transcended and oneness with Brahman can be attained by the devotees. Now I need to define a couple of terms. First of all, Udgita. Udgita means the hymns of the Samaveda, which are mostly extracted from the Rig Veda, but they are those suitable for singing. And these hymns are sung by the Ugatri priest, who is one of the four principal priests of any Vedic sacrifice, one for each Veda. So the Sama Veda is represented by the Udgatri, and the song is called the Udgita. And just through this Udgita, the demigods thought, oh, we can surpass the demons. Why? Because the demons don't have any love. The demons are only out for themselves to get what they want. And they will stop at nothing. Huh? There is no evil that is too disgusting <laughs> for them. <laughs> they will do it no matter what it takes just to get their result. But the demigods aren't like that. The demigods have principles. They won't do evil. They want to conquer through good. And so this horse sacrifice or any sacrifice, uh, the Jyotishtoma, is a particular form of the Agnishtoma, which is a collection of seven sacrifices based on the different elements. And Jyoti, of course, means light. 
What light are we talking about? The light of Brahman. So the Jyotishtoma is the part of the Agnishtoma set of sacrifices, which are performed over a long time, that is meant for realizing the light of Brahman, which of course is consciousness. So if one realizes consciousness, he can do no wrong. He cannot do evil because he knows I am the self and the self is the same in all bodies. So as I would like to be done to me, I will do the same to others. So a self-realized person is automatically kind, compassionate, helpful, sympathetic, huh? simpatico, and loving. So this is the kind of people we want to be because it leads to a higher result. Huh? I was just talking with one boy this morning. <laughs> what a rascal. He, said, he says, I want money. And I said, well, worship Vishnu. Vishnu's consort is Lakshmi. If you please Vishnu, Lakshmi will rain money on you. Huh? It'll just drop out of the sky. And he says, I tried that. It didn't work. Duh. That means you did it wrong. For one thing, after he didn't get an immediate result, he gave up. He did not perform it out of duty. He performed it for a selfish result. And that's evil. That's the mentality of the demons. That's exactly what we're talking about here in this Brahmana. And how the demons can be defeated and how the results of that defeat can be used to transcend even the realization of death. The real message of the Brihararanyakopanishad is that rites and meditation together are more powerful than either one alone. And this is really the only way to attain complete self-realization. Aung Tatsat, Aung Shaktihi Aung. And we want this for you, by the way. <laughs> because if you do it, you'll be happy. Huh? Follow the instructions. It does work. Aung Namah Shivaya. <laughs>